Okay, so if you're pretty strong in basic mathematics, well, then this should be a nice, easy problem for you to solve without the aid of a calculator. But a lot of people are going to be surprised that they're going to get this wrong because they haven't mastered a lot of the important concepts in basic mathematics as well as they should have. But maybe you are the exception. But let's go and take a look at our problem. We have negative 34 plus 12 divided by negative 3 times 5. All right, so again, this is the problem. The only rule here is no calculator. But if you could figure this out, well, go ahead and put your answer into the comment section. I'll show you the correct answer in just one second. And then, of course, I'll walk through exactly how to solve this problem without the aid of a calculator. But uh, before we get started, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John, and I have been teaching middle and high school math for decades. And if you need help learning math, well, check out my math help program at tcmathacademy.com. You can find a link to that in the description below. And if this video helps you out, or if you just enjoy this content, make sure to like and subscribe, as that definitely helps me out. Okay, now before I show you the answer, it's pretty obvious here that you need to know a thing or two about positive and negative numbers because we have a negative 34 here and of course we have a negative 3 over here. So if you forgot about positive and negative numbers, well, you know, that might be one reason that someone could have gotten this problem wrong. Now, of course, I'm assuming that all of you out there have some basic arithmetic skills. In other words, you can add, divide, and multiply. Uh, hopefully that's not a problem. But there is a bigger reason here that I think a lot of people are going to get this wrong, and I'll hold off on telling you what that is uh, and before I show you the answer, and we'll get into the solution here. But I think there's going to be three possible reasons why people got this wrong. Again, uh, they forgot positive and negative numbers, or they simply forgot how to add, uh, you know, multiply and divide. But there's this other reason, of course, I'll tell you that in just one second. But here is the answer. The correct answer is negative 54. Okay, so how did you do? Well, if you got this right, we have to celebrate by giving a nice little happy face and A+, plus, a 100%, and multiple stars. So you can tell your friends and family that indeed you are a certified professional expert in the area of the order of operations, positive and negative numbers, and just basic arithmetic. Now, if you tell your friends and family uh, that you're an expert in this, they're going to be like, I'm not that impressed. Uh, leave me alone. You're interrupting my Netflix. But in all honesty or all seriousness, you know, all jokes aside, you know what? That's very good that you got this problem right. It shows me that you have some pretty strong basic math skills. Now, it is possible that some of you got a little lucky here. That's no, uh, you know, not a problem. Because the only way you can get lucky is if you try to do the prompt. But let's go ahead and make sure that you absolutely know why you got this thing right. All right. Now, of course, if you got this wrong, the third reason, okay, I mentioned um, in the beginning of this video, that if someone's going to get this problem wrong, it's going to be because of one of three reasons. One, they forgot how to deal with positive and negative numbers. The second is they just simply forgot how to add divide and multiply. All right. So uh, that is the second reason. And the third reason is this thing right here, which is the order of operations. Okay. So here we have a math problem that involves addition, division, and multiplication. Now in mathematics, we have problems that involve different mathematical operators. That's what these things are. Uh, these are the things we can do with numbers. Of course, we can subtract. We can also take powers with numbers. There's a lot of things we can do with numbers. And if we have a problem that has different operations involved in it, our answer could be quite different if we uh, do the problem in, a di in different orders. In other words, we might decide, you know what, I think I'm going to add first, and then maybe I'll uh, multiply these, and then I'll divide the results, or maybe I'll divide here, then I'll multiply here, or maybe I'll just, you know, uh, add these two, and then I'll divide, and then multiply. So in other words, you can kind of get the gist here that the order and the way we do this problem is going to come up with, you know, we're going to come up with different uh, values, different answers. Of course, there's only one right answer. So what is the correct order? Well, we need to refer to this lovely little uh, acronym right here, PEMDAS. Right? Hopefully you've heard of this. And what we're talking about here, again, is the proper order of operations. So we have these mathematical operations. What is the correct order we should do these in? Well, this is a nice little checklist for you to follow. And if you've never heard of PEMDAS, well, this is something that's absolutely critical 
in basic math. So let me go ahead and quickly explain it right now. All right, so these letters stand for something, and this is a checklist that goes from left to right, okay? Now, before I uh, tell you what this is, I'll give you a little uh, memory aid, uh, you know, so you can remember this PEMDAS as I explain it, and that is, please excuse my dear Aunt Sally. Once again, please excuse my dear Aunt Sally. Now, I'm not sure what Aunt Sally did, but we thank her for her lovely little phrase anyways. Okay, so let me go and explain this right now. So P stands for parentheses. So anytime uh, when you're facing any problem in mathematics, if there are parentheses or these type of things, brackets or these type of squiggly uh, brackets like this, these are technically called grouping symbols. In other words, we can group numbers together like this. So anytime we see groups, um, i.e. parentheses or these type of brackets, we're going to do what's inside of those first. Now, sometimes uh, math problems have multiple sets of parentheses. In other words, we'll have uh, some inner parentheses and then some brackets. So you always want to start from the inside working out. Okay, so I'm not going to make this into a full lesson on the order of operations because this topic definitely warrants that. But this, again, this is just a quick review. So that's uh, what the P stands for. So if we have any parentheses, we're going to start there. Obviously, in this problem, uh, we don't have any parentheses. Let's move on to E. E stands for powers. Now, E, the actual letter, uh, stands for exponents. So uh, let's just take a quick review here. So if I have 2 to the third power, okay, what does this mean? Well, it means take 2 and multiply it by itself three times. Well, this is a power, but this part of the power up here, this little number, is called the exponent, and this bottom number down here is called the base. So E stands for exponents, but it implies powers. So if you have any powers, you're going to want to do those next. Now, obviously, in this particular problem, we don't have any powers, so this doesn't apply. But if we did have powers, we would have to do them uh, in this order. Okay, so here is where so many people make mistakes when it comes to the order of operations. So let me just tell you what the rest of these letters stand for. So M stands for multiplication, D stands for division, A stands for addition, and S stands for subtraction. Now, uh, you know, I am telling you that this is a checklist that goes from left to right. So it makes sense that, you know, someone would interpret this as, all right, the next thing I'm going to do is multiplication. And then after all the multiplication is done, I'll move on to any division. Then once that's done, I'll move on to addition, and then I'll move on to subtraction. That is absolutely logical. It makes sense. But unfortunately, that's not the way this works. Now, a lot of you might be saying, hey, Mr. YouTube Math Man, you're confusing me here because you're just telling me this is a checklist from left to right. Yes, indeed. But again, uh, this is a, an area in math where a lot of people confuse. So this is the way it actually works. Okay. So the first two things are correct. Uh, we're going to do our parentheses. We're going to look for parentheses and we're going to take care of any powers. But these two here are actually groups. Okay. So the M and D stand for you're going to do multiplication or division, whatever you see first from left to right. So if we have multiplication, then division from left to right will go this way. But if we have division, then multiplication, we have to take care of the division, and then the multiplication. So this is a group, um, and the addition and subtraction work the same way. It's whatever we see first from left to right. Now, that should be a big clue in terms of where we're going to start because we don't have any parentheses, we don't have any powers, but we definitely have some multiplication and division. So you need to think uh, to yourself, hey, what is this guy going to do next? Well, you know what I'm going to do next because I'm going to show you this right now. We're going to go through our lovely little checklist. All right, no parentheses in the problem, uh, no powers, but I do have some multiplication and division. So what comes first from left to right? Well, clearly uh, the division comes first before the multiplication. So this is what I have to do next, okay, or do first. So it's going to be 12 divided by negative 3. Okay, so this uh, particular part of the problem is where a lot of people make mistakes with, you know, in basic math or simplifying numeric expressions. So don't feel bad if you got this wrong because now you know uh, what not to do. And in future problems, you'll do these problems correctly. Okay, so let's go ahead and take care of this. 12 divided by negative 3 is what? Well, 12 divided by negative 3 is negative 4. And the rule for multiplication and division of positive negative numbers is super easy. If the signs are different, now here we have a positive number and here we have a negative number. If the signs are different, the answer is always going to be negative. Okay, super uh, easy. So a positive divided by a negative, answer is negative. If we had a negative divided by a positive, 
answer is going to be negative. If we have a positive times a negative, answer is negative. If we had a negative times a positive, answer is negative because we had different signs. So anytime there are different signs uh, for multiplication and division, the rules are the same. The answer is always negative. Of course, when the signs are the same, the answers are positive. So negative times a negative is positive, and negative divided by a negative is also positive. Okay, so hopefully that makes sense. So we have 12 divided by negative 3, which, of course, is negative 4. All right, so, uh, you know, this is looking pretty easy, hopefully, from this point forward. So here is our problem. And, again, we always want to be thinking about this PEMDAS acronym. So we did all the parentheses. There's powers. So did we do all the, the multiplication division? No, we just took care of that one division. But we still have some multiplication left, so that's what we're going to have to handle next. So we have negative 4 times negative 5, which, of course, you should know the answer to because I just explained how to multiply positive and negative numbers. So let's go ahead and take the next step, which of course is having you quickly subscribe to my YouTube channel. I love making these math videos. I try to make them entertaining to some degree. Uh, I definitely don't, don't like to teach math in a way that sounds like a, a drone or robot or a textbook, okay? That's why a lot of people don't like math. They're just like, you know, I don't like math. It's so boring. You know, I have to take this boring math class. You know, well, listen, you know, math teachers, you know, or any good teacher in any subject, you know, try to make the uh, the material, you know, interesting and they bring it to life. Right? And it's not uh, always so easy. And when it comes to the order of operations, it can be a bit of a challenge to make the, uh, you know, material fun and, you know, engaging. But that's what I try to do. And if you are trying to improve in mathematics, well, I want to encourage you to check out my full course instructions. Uh, you can see all my courses or my main courses. Uh, you'll find links to those in the description of this video. But if you don't understand something like this problem and you are you know, trying to learn math, if you need to learn math, well, you need to do something about it. And the way to do something about it, the way to learn math is first you need to get yourself some instruction. Just don't try to do problems like this. Get yourself some instruction, in other words, a lesson on the topic, okay? Once you have some great instruction, full comprehensive, not a quick tutorial, uh, like a really fully explained, you know, lesson on the material, then you need to start practicing. You got to practice, 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 and you have to practice a, a wide variety of problems, easy problems, uh, kind of uh, mid-level problems, and then very difficult type of problems. So that's the only way you're going to master a skill. So anyways, and my um, uh, YouTube channel is all about supporting you on your math journey, all right? So I need your help, though. And the best way you can support my work is to hit that subscribe button. And if you're going to do that, you might as well hit that notification bell as well. Okay, so let's go ahead and finish this problem up. So again, we uh, are always keeping this PEMDAS in mind. No parentheses, no powers, multiplication, division. Yes, we had division. We took care of that because it came first from left to right. And now i got to take care of this multiplication. All right, so negative 4 times uh, 5, we have a negative times a positive, right? Negative times positive, the answer is going to be negative. So 4 times 5 is 20, but this is going to be negative 20. And now we can, whoops, whoa, I went too far down here. Whoa, 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 okay, let me <laughs> get control of myself. All right, so now we're down to this right here. We have negative uh, 34 plus negative 20. Now we are down to adding uh, positive and negative numbers. Now, of course, you can see the answer is negative 54, and you have a negative 34 plus a negative 20, and the answer is negative 54. So what is the rule here when you're adding and subtracting positive and negative numbers? Well, I'm not going to go into the full thing here, but the, one of the best ways you can learn how to add and subtract positive and negative numbers is to think of money, okay? So negative numbers is like having debt, and positive numbers is like having money. Let me give you a simple example. Uh, a simple example before we, um, you know, look at the final answer here. So if you have seven dollars, okay, you have seven dollars in your pocket. Well, that's a great feeling. And let's suppose your friend comes up to you and says, "Hey, you remember? Uh, I gave you uh, five dollars last week. You owe me that five dollars." Well, you have uh, five dollars in debt, right? So the question mathematically would be equivalent to this, uh, 7 plus negative 5. You have $7, but you also owe $5, 7 plus negative 5. So what is your financial situation? Well, you'd give 
out of your $7, you'd pay back your friend because you're just a good friend like that. And you'd be left with what? Well, you'd still have $2 to your name. So seven plus negative five is positive two, right? So hopefully that makes sense. Now let's just kind of uh, switch this around a little bit. And let's suppose you owe someone $7, okay? Now you're like, oh boy, I owe someone, but I only have $5. Now this person comes up to you and says, hey, give me back my $7. You're like, well, I can't give you back your entire $7 because I only have $5, but I'll give you my $5, but I still owe you $2, okay? So my financial situation is my debt now has decreased from negative seven down to negative two. All right, so again, how you learn math, who's teaching you math, you know, uh, makes a huge difference in your ability to be successful in math. And I suspect a lot of you are like, boy, I never really understood that. But this uh, Mr. YouTube Math Man made this uh, so much easier for me to understand. And that's what it's all about. Okay. If you're confused in math, you got to find someone to teach you in a way you like and understand because this stuff is not too, too complex. It's certainly not um, you know, beyond what you can understand. Okay, so now let's go ahead and answer this question. So we have negative 34. It's like having a negative $34, $34 bill or debt. And then we have another negative $20 debt or we owe two, we owe two people, this person 34 bucks and this person 20 bucks. So altogether we have $54 in debt or negative 54. So negative plus a negative is a negative. Okay, so don't feel bad if you didn't get any of this right. You know, all my videos are intended to just, you know, be a check for understanding. In other words, kind of a little pop quiz so you can kind of see what you know and don't know because, you know, you can't improve in anything unless you kind of gauge or take an inventory of your current uh, current level, right? So what is your current math uh, level? Well, you know, you could take a, you know, real, you know, uh, professionally set up, diagnostics exam, but I don't think that's necessary. The best way to kind of uh, know whether you uh, understand a lot of math is do a lot of prompts. And if you get the prompts right, well, you know, that's a pretty good indication that you know what you're doing. If you're getting a lot of prompts wrong, well, that's an indication that you need to review. Okay, so hopefully this little video was helpful in some way. And if that was the case, don't forget to like and subscribe. And with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your math adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.